On today's photo moment, we're going to be talking about the new 9 by 16 aspect ratio for IGTV, how to shoot for it and how to edit it. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first li live, li no, not live. Today's not live. I'm in Chicago, as you can see outside. It's a beautiful, cold, color temperature, cold day outside. And I was not able to go live this morning as planned, so I decided to just uh, do an edited, uploaded video for you. So today we're going to talk about the brand new, just announced IGTV, Instagram TV, and how you shoot vertically for it. Now, if you haven't seen the news yet, Instagram has launched a new TV channel network, whatever you want to call it. People are calling it a YouTube competitor. We'll see about that. But the whole thing on IGTV is that you have to upload vertical video. Interesting. It's meant to be viewed like this. Now, there's nothing stopping someone from just rotating the phone. So I don't know if Instagram is going to actually flag and remove videos if you were to upload it just by rotating your video 9, 9 to 916, it was normally 16 by 9, you just rotated it and upload it and then just expect your viewers to rotate their phone. I don't know if they're going to be flagging and taking those down, but it is a new format, 9 by 16. Why not play with it? Let's, uh, let's experiment and see how it looks. So today's show is about how to shoot for it. So if you are shooting with your DSLR or DSLM, you have two options. You can either do the obvious and shoot vertical, right? I mean, you can, you can, I know this is hard to believe, but you can actually rotate your camera and shoot video. It's weird. I did it all day yesterday. It's weird, but you can do it. Or you could shoot your standard landscape wide, like you usually do, and then crop into it. Now, there are no resolutions dictated on the IGTV help website. There is aspect ratio, 9 by 16 being the optimum, but there is no resolution dictated. Now, I would say that you want to have at least 1920 tall, full HD, but vertically. So if you're shooting with your camera in the vertical orientation and you're shooting in HD, 1920 by 1080, you're set. However, if you wanted to shoot landscape, then shooting 1920 by 1080 is not really going to be enough. You would need to be shooting in 4K Ultra HD and then cropping into the shot. So how you do it is up to you. But the challenge with cropping into the shot is there are no markings on your screen to show you that aspect ratio. Now, sure, you could get some tape and put it on the screen if you really wanted to set it up that way. But if you are shooting wide with the intention of cropping in, it's very easy to not realize what you're cropping out of the shot. It's so narrow that if you're just shooting any normal scene, suddenly things are going out of frame that you didn't realize, and that may not be ideal. So. While obviously it can be done, and again, you could mark your screen so that you have that framing on there, it is probably not ideal. The advantage, of course, of shooting wide and cropping into it is you can then use that video for something else. But if you are really shooting it for that wide crop, then you basically have a whole lot of dead space that wasn't really part of your original framing, and why is that there? So totally up to you the way that you do it. We're going to take a look at how to handle both of those types of content in Final Cut Pro. Now, I'm showing this in Final Cut Pro 10. It's going to be the same whether you're using Premiere Resolve or anything else. The basic general rules, basic general idea here is going to be the same, but we're using Final Cut. So let's have a look. I've been out shooting some vertical video here in Chicago, and as you can see here, it's a little bit weird to see your stuff sideways on there. But uh, but that's okay. That is what it is. So let's start by creating a new project. Command N to create the new project here. We're going to call it IGTV Test. And you are not going to be able to use the automatic settings. So if you are looking at a screen like this, you are going to have to get out of automatic and click on Use Custom Settings. Under Custom Settings, there is no aspect ratio preset for what you need, so you'll have to go to Completely Custom and then type in the numbers that you want. So that's 1080 wide by 1920 tall. And then your frame rate, I'm shooting at 2997. Everything else here can be left as it is. Click OK. And we now have our vertical, very strange, very tall video. So let's, uh, let's add a shot. So I'm going to go down here and just grab a couple shots here. Let's grab a couple here and drag those onto the timeline. And immediately, you see we've got a huge problem. The footage is sideways and it's squished in, so there's something going on here. So we need to fix a couple of things. First of all, we want to rotate the shot. So I'll select this clip here, go under the uh, inspector here, under the video tab, and go to transform rotation. I'm going to type in 90 degrees and it rotates it. And incidentally, if you had rotated your camera this way, then you're going to have to go minus or negative 90 degrees. So you may have to toggle it depending on how you shoot. 
Okay, we're, we've rotated the shot correctly, but there's all this black space around there. What's that all about? Well, if we look down here under the settings, you'll see that there is, at the very bottom, under spatial conform, the type is set to fit. Now, fit is normally what we want, because what the idea behind fit is, let's say that you're shooting with uh, you're shooting 4K, but you're going to put it onto a 1920 by 1080 canvas. You generally want to take your entire video and fit it into that space. Likewise, if you had smaller video that you were adding to a timeline, in standard def, for example, you probably want to scale it up. And so by choosing fit as the default, it just makes it fit within the frame. That's fine usually, but now it's actually working against us because it originally fit it in when we dropped it on the timeline, even though it was sideways, but now that we've rotated it, it's now too small. So there's a couple of different options that we have in here. The first one that you have is to fill. And fill is going to fill the entire canvas with that clip, which is technically accurate for this clip, but I'm not gonna choose fill, I'm gonna choose none. And even though it makes no change here, you'll see why it is gonna make a difference later. So we've got that type set to none and the rotate to 90% or 90 degrees. Okay, well now what about the next shot? Hold on a second here. So do I have to go through and do this for every single shot? No. There's a couple ways that we can go about making this a lot faster. First of all, we could just select all the shots on the timeline at once. So let's say that we've got a few things on here. We'll just add a couple more, drag these in. I could select all of these here and all at once, go up here and choose 90 degrees, and all at once choose spatial conform to none. And now each one of these shots is fitting in there fine. But that's still a couple of things that I had to click and drag on, and uh, I'd like to avoid that if I can help it. So what I'll do is save an effects preset. Now that I've got the two things in there that I need, the rotation and the spatial conform, I will say that as a preset that I can then just drag and drop onto clips in the future. So the way I do that is just select any one of these that we've already done the work on. Over here under the effects menu at the bottom, you'll see it says save effects preset. When you click on it, you'll see the things that it's going to save, the rotation and the spatial conform. If you had done something else to the shot and you didn't want that to be saved as part of the preset, you could just disable that here. We'll call this IGTV and I'm gonna put this in my own custom category. So let's just create a new one and I'll call it Photo Joseph. Click Create, Save, and away we go. So now, under the effects presets, you'll see here's Photo Joseph and there's IGTV. Great. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add a couple other shots. So we'll just take a few more, drag these onto the timeline here. So again, we're seeing the aspect ratio and that one is spatial conformed differently for some reason. So we're just gonna take our IGTV preset, drag that preset on, and that shot's great, but we have a problem. It has not affected these other clips. So unfortunately, when you drag a preset onto a group of clips, it only applies it to the one that you have actually applied it to. But there's an easy way to work around here. I realized after recording this that you can simply double click on the preset to add that effect to all selected clips. So let's go back to this. Let's grab the first clip where we had done the, the effect that's been applied to. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy those settings to the clipboard, select the other clips, and then under the edit menu, if we choose paste attributes, that's gonna show me the different attributes that it's gonna paste in. So I could just tap on paste and it has now added those in. Or let me undo that. Since I know that everything that's on this clip is something that I want to apply, we'll go ahead and copy that, select the other clips in here, and then under the edit menu, simply choose paste effects. That'll immediately do it with no confirmation dialog. So that is probably one of the faster ways that you're going to make these changes across multiple clips. Just get a bunch of them on the timeline, fix one of them, and then copy and paste those attributes across to all the others. So that works out well. Now there is another way that we can go about doing this, do something a little bit different here. So let's take a look at that. Instead of adding it to the clip completely unprepared and then making the changes on here that I need to make, I'm going to make at least one of the changes to the clips in the browser itself. So you'll notice once I select multiple clips or even a single clip in here, I can't get to the rotation. So it'd be great if I could from this panel here, just rotate them all in advance and drop them onto the timeline that way. I can't do that, but what I can do is set the spatial conform. I can set that to fit, fill, or none. Set that in advance. And again, I'm gonna choose none for the reasons we talked about earlier. And then I will take this shot, drag, or this group of shots, drag those onto the timeline. And then with those all still selected, go up here and type in 90 degrees, and now they're all set. So there are a couple of different options in here of how you go about getting those on the timeline. The point is you do need to rotate them and you do need to fill that canvas with them.
We mentioned earlier that there are three different conform formats. There's the fit, the fill, and the none. And I, I said we should choose none on here. And maybe I didn't explain why that's actually better. Uh, let's say that you're working with 4K footage. The idea behind none is that the shot that you add onto your timeline is going to be at 100% of its size. So if it was a smaller clip, you're gonna see it smaller. If it's a bigger clip, you're gonna see it bigger and actually punching into it. Now you can you can set the, uh, the conform to anything you want and then scale it however you want. And the Final Cut's never going to scale your footage down and then back up again. So if you were to take a 4K shot, drop it onto a 1080p timeline, it automatically scaled it down and then you zoomed into it, it's not gonna scale it down and back up. It does the math, it knows what it should do and it only does that rendering once. But you can, but when you do that, if you have dropped it in and set it to fit, it's going to say that it is at 100% size, which is 100% of the canvas, but that's not actually 100% size of the shot. So I prefer to work with none. By setting it to none, then the shot, the clip that gets dropped on the timeline is gonna get dropped in at 100%. The slider is gonna say 100%. And now I know if I make that shot bigger or smaller, whether I'm making it bigger, growing it over 100%, scaling it up, or if it's smaller than that, which is just fine. So that's why I choose none. And this is gonna become more important when we start working with the 4K footage. Remember, I said for the 1920 by 1080, the standard HD, it didn't matter. But in 4K, it does. So let's take a look at what happens here. So let's go ahead and add a 4K shot to start with. Go back to the top of my browser here. I've selected a couple of wide aspect ratio 4K shots from another shoot, and I'm just going to drop one of these onto the timeline to start. So right away, we have the exact same problem we talked about before. It is just filling the canvas like so. And we don't have to rotate it because it is not a 90 degree rotated shot, but we do need to make this fill the canvas. So if I go up here and I choose spatial conform fill, then what happens is we have it filling the canvas, but we're not actually seeing 100% of the shot. We're seeing it top to bottom, but we're not at 100% zoom, even though it says 100% here, because that's 100% scaled for this canvas. So instead, what I want to do is go and set this to none. And when I do that, see how this zoomed in just a little bit? Not much, but a little bit. So I'm going to go back, set it to fill, and then set it to none. And you see it zoomed in just a little bit there. Well, we are now looking at it pixel for pixel. We are actually a little bit bigger than our canvas. Remember, HD is 1920, but vertical 4K is 2160, so it's a little bit extra. We have a little bit of extra room to work with here. So I've set it to none, so it's bigger. Now I'm gonna take the scale slider and scale it down a little bit so that it actually fits the canvas, fills it completely. The number that I need to punch in there is 89. How do we know that? Well, if we do a little bit of math here, 1920 over 2160, you'll see it's 0.8888888. So we can go ahead and just type that and we'll go 88.8888 degrees, or percent rather, and it averages that out or, or rounds it up to 88.89. So now we are looking at the entire shot, but we see it scaled at 88.89, which tells us that we can zoom in a little bit. If we get to a shot, let's say, uh, let's reposition it. So this is how we're gonna reposition the shot using the X position. So we can choose what portion of the shot that we want. So let's say I go to this and I go, you know, I'd like to be a little bit closer. I know that I can actually take this up to 100%. I can either do it with a slider or since I'm going to 100, I can just click on the reset and that's gonna pull it into 100%. So there's some pretty good advantages here to working with the none and then setting the scale to 89, and then later if you need to, you can slide that up to 100% and punch in a little bit. At this point, it's just like the other one. We could save this as an effect preset, add that onto an individual clip, or just drop the clips on the timeline, make the change to one of them, copy and paste it out to the others. It's totally up to you, whatever works for your workflow. I like making the little effect preset though. That's handy because if you are, it's one thing if you're just gonna add all the clips to your timeline and then start editing them, but most of us don't work that way. We tend to grab a clip and drag it to the timeline to add it. And then we, that means we have to add that effect and we'll wanna add that effect each time, one at a time. Now adding that effect by dragging it on can definitely get tedious. Even though we've reduced this to a single drag, that can get tedious, but we can actually make it a keyboard shortcut. Watch this. I'm going to go back to this IGTV clip that I made earlier. So this is the one, let's just verify all this. I'm gonna take one of these other shots, drag it onto the timeline here. And you can see that this is sideways. I take that, drag it on there, and boom, that's the preset that I want. Okay, if I right click on this, I can make it the default video effect. Make default video effect. Now, before I select that, the default video effect is applied from the edit menu down here. See where it says add color wheels? That's not actually an add color wheels command. It's actually an add default effect command. Option E is the keyboard shortcut. So if I go over here and I select it and I say make default video effect, 
then the edit menu now shows add IGTV as that video effect, which means I can take a group of shots, add these to my timeline, and now I can actually select all of these as they are now and simply hit option E and all of them are rotated into place. So now it all comes together. This is probably the fastest way to do it. Take a moment to create that preset, save it as your default preset, add the shots on and then just hit dot option E and that will put that preset across, across all those clips, something you can't do by dragging and dropping on, but by hitting the keyboard shortcut, you can. Now, when you're done working on this, if you wanna get back to your color board preset, then that's easy enough to do. Just go in and find the color preset that you like to start with. So we go to color, maybe color board, color curves, whatever your default is, and choose that and say, make default video effect. And now it's back to being on there. Add color board or whatever you like as your default video effect. Once you're done with your edit, you have to render this thing out. So we're gonna go up to file and choose share. Apple devices 1080p works out just fine. So I'm gonna choose this. You will want to make sure that under your settings, it is set at the full resolution, 1080 by 1920, that it's not just set to a smaller partial resolution there. Also, I'd recommend just take this up to better quality. There's no reason to do the faster in code, do the better in quality, get the best quality out there. Hit next, render that out, save it to your desktop or wherever you like. And from there, you can airdrop it over to your phone. Once it's on your phone, you can upload it to IGTV using the IGTV app. You have to use the app. You can't use Instagram itself. Even though you can view IGTV in the Instagram app to upload content, you have to use the IGTV app. And if you are a larger verified account, then you can access the Instagram uploader for IGTV. I don't, my account's not big enough, so I don't have that. But if you have a big enough or verified account, then apparently you can do that. And also you'll be able to upload larger content. I think it's up to an hour, whereas uh, smaller users like myself, we only have access to 10 minute videos. So that's it. That's how we can shoot and prep our footage in Final Cut or whatever NLE you're using and get that up onto IGTV. So enjoy shooting vertical. It's a, it's a fun challenge. It's an interesting thing to do. Um, if you're doing it and you make something cool, just tag me in your video. Let me take a look at it. Just photo Joseph on Instagram. Also, I want to remind you guys that we do work on a value for value model here on this show. What that means is if you feel like you have taken value from today's show, I would appreciate it if you could put some value back into the show itself. Head over to photojoseph.com slash support. Lots of different ways you can support the show there. You can support us on Patreon via PayPal shopping in the affiliate store or viewing content on lynda.com. Or you can even hire me directly if you have a big project you're working on, you want some help, I'm available. So with that, take care of yourselves, everybody. Make some great content on IGTV and tag Photo Joseph in it so I can see it. See you next time. Bye-bye.